So as I continue working on the uh, aileron hinge bracket in the background, you can see I've, I've drilled out those two uh, lower, if the wing were uh, wing were in the correct orientation, the two lower rivets and replace them with flush mounted rivets. I had to do it in both places. Um, and here in a second, I talk about chattering a little. Uh, I've also removed all of uh, the, the, the parts off the wing, meaning the flaps and the ailerons, because really they're just in the way up there. And at this point, I would rather you know, tuck them away somewhere so that they don't get damaged. Of course, I'm really nervous about like picking them up and moving them because I'm just afraid I'm gonna either drop it or, or dunk it into a, you know, a table desk or table corner rather or something like that. That would suck. So anyways, I've, I've got those off and on their own now, hopefully in a safe place uh, while I continue to work on the other things. So as you guys know, uh, on this channel, I am always upfront and candid about my opinions. If something is good, I say it's good. If something's bad, I say it's bad. Uh, in the last video, I said that my uh, XYZ Duo 3D printer was a piece of hot garbage, which uh, I thought it was. Uh, and I had somebody who owned one actually contact me and say, wait, wait, wait. Before you judge it too quickly, while it is not the greatest printer in the world, it might be you. And I said, well, yeah, you know, it might. I'm still fairly new to it. He's, and his thing was, the problem is the filament that comes with it is ABS. And ABS is notoriously difficult to work with, first of all. And two, he said, that printer just sucks at it. He says, get a reel of PLA and use that instead and give it a try. Uh, I, it just so happens I had some PLA that I ordered online. I am trying it right now, and so far the results are night and day. So um, I will amend my statement. It is not a piece of hot garbage. It just doesn't do ABS very well. Uh, for whatever reason, there's a lot of curling and curving, and you know, both with a heated bed and all that other stuff, it just doesn't really do ABS very well. But PLA seems to be working fairly fairly well. So uh, cool, awesome, that's, that's what I want. So if I can get some 3D printed parts out of it successfully, through PLA, then I will amend my statement that I was just doing using the wrong filament, even though it's the filament that came with it. Mm, I don't know. Anyways, so uh, yeah, I do want to get into more 3D printing, and I very much want an SLA machine, uh, but I don't have that kind of money. Mm, so anyways, yeah. All right, well, got the one drill now. Now working on the other, and the trick is uh, countersinking this guy. If you're not real careful, it's easy to chatter on these holes, especially this particular aluminum. Um, I find going slow is the key. But another way to get around uh, chatter is they make uh, some of these countersink bits that have you know, three teeth, four teeth, five teeth, all the way up to like six, I think. Uh, six is the most I've ever seen. And sometimes getting one with more teeth uh, helps, I am told. I only have the three, so I don't know if a four, five, or six would help at all, but um, this works. It's just you got to go slow. It's very easy to go too fast. Uh, so I'm probably going to get in the way here. Sorry. And then it's just a matter of, you know, slowly cutting it in. And then every so often, checking to see if it fits. It doesn't yet, so. We go again until it does. I wanted to talk a little more about the 360 degree camera thing. Um, I, think, I think there was a misunderstanding about how I wanted to use it. Uh, a lot of people, when you say 360 degree cam camera, they think of this fisheye lens thing where you have to like click and drag to look around. And that's great if you wanna like do sport videos maybe or, or later on when I'm flying, but it, in the short term, that's not why I want to use it. I want to be able to literally set the camera up in the middle of my shop while I move around and do stuff. And I, in post-production, will have the point follow it and it will produce a flat picture so that if I move over here, the picture will just kind of pan over there with me as if it were a cameraman. You're not going to, you're not going to see like a 360 degree view. Uh, maybe, maybe I could do that for patrons or something. Anyways, uh, so that's how I plan to use it. And uh, the 
camera I'm looking at right now is the Insta 361 X or something like that, or X1, or I'll have to look it up again. Uh, it's not. It's not like Fly 360, which I've not heard a lot of good reviews about, unfortunately. I've, I've no experience with it. And it's not the uh, Garmin, which I'm surprised. I figured the Garmin would be a good product. Uh, apparently, it's, it's only real redeeming quality at this point is uh, the fact that you can put all the overlays of information, which, again, that would be great in a plane. But for what I want to use it for, not as good. Uh, and the other two competitors the uh, was the was the uh, GoPro offering and then this uh, Insta360 and the GoPro offering is is good but it's just really expensive whereas the Insta360 is like 399 or something like that so you know 399 for the Insta or I think like 800 for the GoPro I can get two of the other ones and from all intents and purposes or, or, or all reviews anyways really seems like that's the better product. So anyways, guys, I'm still up in the air. I haven't ordered it yet. It's still one of those things I'm thinking about. And I just wanted to address people's concern because some of y'all had said like, I don't want to have to deal with, you know, dragging around to look. I want you to show me stuff, not me have to find it. I agree. I'm not, that's not how I'm planning to use it. Hope that explains it. Okay. I've been elite testing this tank again. Um, I think we got it. So uh, in a previous video, I showed you where I was using my hand and just kind of reach up under there and, and smear in the goop underneath this because I had somehow missed uh, the underside of this piece. Uh, but I think we've got it now. I've poured four buckets from the red stinky bucket into here. And I think we're good. I think we got it. So it's just a matter now of letting it sit for a couple days and see if any, any leaks happen. Um, hopefully not uh i'll come out and check it periodically to see but basically it's just a matter of if there's any wetness on this towel these towels once they get damp uh they kind of change shape and so you'll be able to say ah that one that one's been damp so all right so there we go i talked to a buddy of mine about this uh the fact that i'm doing all this leak testing on my tanks and and he saw that i had pulled that tank off and was was he was wondering why, why'd you take it off the wing and i said well i wanted to make sure i wanted to do another thorough leak test on it. And his point was, after he's built a number of these planes, is that I might be overdoing my leak testing. Um, I said, well, you know, I don't, I don't want there to be a leak. And he said, well, no, certainly <laughs> you don't want there to be a leak. But there's a point at which you can test and test and test and test and you never get on with building the dang plane because you're afraid of this one thing going wrong. He said, you know, this is a, this is a lot of moving parts. There's a lot going on. Uh, he said, just accept the fact that there's a, there's a good chance that there's going to be a leak. Do your due diligence, but don't overdo your due diligence. And I, okay, I, I get it. Um, I think I told him my plan, you know, to do, the this dry seal and then do a wet test with just water then seal the back and do uh a, you know the air test with the balloon and with soapy water and whatnot and then finally to do a leak test with fuel he said yeah that's it i see he said don't go any farther than that don't do any more testing with than that because honestly at some point you'll find a leak and you'll just fix it it'll be no big deal uh, and to that end i asked him i said how how do you you know, how, how do you fix one of these leaks? If there's a hole or a leak or something, just a, a pinhole leak where it's dribbling fuel, how do you fix that? And he says, just a dab of Pro Seal is all it really takes. And, and he's also said, uh, a lot of times what happens is there might be a leak and then just the painting of the skin stops it. He says, it's weird how you stop leaks, but they kind of stop themselves. He was really actually kind of... Um, prophetic in that and that he had that exact thing happen on his plane where on his tank uh one of the 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 wing um the, one of the the rivets had a, a, a weeping leak in it and he just pulled back the little grit you know the, the grit walk area where it was because it was right at the end tapped it uh just kind of hammered it in a little bit put some pro seal over the top of it and put that grit back over it and you'd never know he had a leak so anyways i'm excited that i got this fixed uh, I am going to continue working on this, uh, let this sit, like I said. Uh, I do need to get a flanging tool for my tank so I can do the final fuel test with that, which I'm gonna do here shortly. Uh, and then I'm gonna go over everything that is in the plans to see what I can move to, because right now there's a lot of hurry up and wait. I'm waiting for parts to come in and stuff to come in before I can continue. Uh, so, 
what now? And hell, at this point, I might just start working on the dang fuselage. All right, so realistically, let's look at the plans and what we have to left to do on the wings. Been working on the wings for freaking ever, right? Sick of it, ready to move on to the fuselage. But, you know, you gotta get all the stuff done. Um, fuel tanks are the big one right now. We're waiting for the fuel tanks. And unfortunately, until I get the darn fuel tanks finished, I can't move on to, you know, the next thing. Uh, so section 19 is the stall warning system. I've not, I chose not to do the stall warning system because I'm going to be doing an AOA, angle of attack indicator system instead. That's fine. Bottom wing skins, so of course we already put uh, some of it, but not the rest. Like I can't put this part of the bottom wing skins on yet as I started over here because getting to the tanks to put those on with the bottom wing skins on suck. Uh, let's make our life easier and not do that yet. So waiting on that. Uh, let's see, pedo tube on the other side. So I've still got to cut the other wing skin to get that pedo tube outlying in there. Uh, that I could probably do, but I think I'm going to try to do that at the same time as I'm putting the bottom wing skin on. So again, I would rather wait until we have the tanks done. Let's see what's next. The bottom wing skin, there's a lot to it. Aileron, I already, I already jumped to the aileron. So section 21, that's already done. Did those, did that, did that, did that. Uh, did that, did that, flaps. Already did the flaps, so section 22 is flaps. That's already done. We, we jumped ahead to that, got that finished. The next one after flaps is aileron actuation. So the next part is once you get everything put together, you've got the tanks on, you got the fuel, you got the, the, the bottom wing skins on, you already have the ailerons and flaps done, then you actually want to get the aileron actuation working. That's, there's more to it than just hooking up the bars. The, so there's, there's a couple different jigs that I have to hook up and whatnot, but then you have to tune them so that they're correct. Again, I'm holding off on that until I get my uh, tanks finished and finalized so that I can move forward from there. But e And even then, on this right one, I have to replace the bracket uh, with the uh, servo bracket for my autopilot, which I do have somewhere. So I need to work on that one too. Um, let's see, what's left? Once that's done, I think you have to do something very similar. You have to do something very similar with the flaps, which we'll get to later. Then, then it's just a matter of doing the wing tips. Well, with the wing tips, one of the things I want to do is, is get the uh, zip tips that we had talked about again in a previous video. I don't have them yet. So again, that's something I have to wait on. Uh, and then that's, I think that's it. Once you have that done, yeah, the tip lighting and all that, that's all, that, that's where we're at. So there's a lot of hurry up and wait. I mean, basically I'm waiting for the tanks. I can't finish my, uh, my, my right tank until I get the part to test it. Uh, sorry, left tank. My left tank until I get the part to test it. And I can't finish my right tank until I get the leak, you know, finalized and make sure, you know, go through my leak process. So, eh, <laughs> I'm at a hold, a hold on the wings and that sucks. I said it before, I'll say it again. Get the quick build wings. They're just, the, the, the building of the wings themselves, not bad, not bad at all actually. The tanks, the tanks seem to put put the hold on everything and that blows. So to that end, I might start working on the fuselage. Now, what's interesting by the way is the the, the book that you have, so each time you get you get plans, they come when you know you get the empennage kit, then you get the the wing kit, then you get the fuselage kit. Each each time you get a pack of plans with it, the most, you know, the most current and latest plans for uh, that particular section. The fuselage plans are thicker than the wing and the empennage combined. I really want to get into it. So I, I may start doing that here real soon while I'm just waiting for the rest of this stuff to get done. Ugh. I feel like I'm spinning my wheels in mud. You know what I mean? They say every, you know, every day go out, if nothing else, just look at it for an hour and you will eventually get the plane finished. Even if, you know, even if you take only an hour each time you go out, eventually it'll get done. But it really seems like that's not the case. Like the amount of time that I'm having to kind of pause and wait is, uh, it's interfering with my cherub-like demeanor. Let's, let's leave it at that. So anyways, 
I'm going to go through and probably clean up the area in here because damn. Um, and then I may start looking at working on the fuselage. Anyway, guys, so in the background, I'm going to run around and start cleaning up my work area, and I'm going to prepare and start working on the fuselage while I wait for all the various things uh, for the wings. And yeah, there you go. If you like what I'm doing on this channel and you want to help support me, if you jump over to my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month, you guys can help support me. Think of it as buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, and finally, uh, I get people all the time asking me, how to contact me directly for one reason or another. Honestly, your best bet is to either uh, jump over to Facebook. You can find me on Facebook. I'll put a link down below. You can send me a message there or you can, uh, it's actually probably easier if you just send me a direct message via via YouTube. Um, I, I always respond to those. It might take me a day or two. Sometimes it doesn't notify me. YouTube's a little weird that way. Uh, but other than that, guys, Usually the questions are, I don't know if I can do this. You can. If I can do this, you can do this. I'm an idiot. So if I can do it, you can. Trust me. Um, and on that note, if you do decide to do it, if you use my builder number, which again is down below, uh, when you order your kit, use me as a reference and Vans will send me a hundred bucks. It's no cost out of your pocket. And again, it's just another way of supporting this project. So thank you so very much, guys. Love you bunches. See you next time.